Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. On some of my previous videos I worked on my IBM PS2 Model 30. It's a computer which came to me in a pretty rough shape and I had to go through several repairs and the full restoration process in order to have it fully up and running. Now, during the repair process, unfortunately, I found that the hard drive, this IBM hard drive, was faulty and was beyond repair, so I replaced the hard drive with an XDIDE and a compact flash, which is working totally fine, no problems with that, but I do feel that a PS2 Model 30 like that, without a hard drive, is kind of missing half of the experience, and the reason is the funny noise that these hard drives used to make. Now, I met those PS2s for the first time when I was a teenager, when uh, I was at school, and I do remember these, what I call the squeaky noise, coming out of these machines, uh, which was, again, part of the experience, and obviously, as you can imagine, it's kind of, kind of stuck in my memories now. So maybe I can replace this hard drive and get a working one, but uh, on a video uh, that I also published, we discovered together that the reason this hard drive failed is because of some contamination that happened internally for um, some kind of material degradation, and I have a feeling that all these hard drives are failing the same way. So investing money into another one, even though working uh, at this moment, might feel like a waste of money, because I have a feeling it won't be working for long. I could replace this hard drive with a different model, but I believe that this is one of the few models which is using a stepper motor to move the heads, and the stepper motor is the one which is making that funny squeaky noise. So there are not many options, to be honest, and again, the PS2 is working, but you turn it on and you can only hear the power supply fan, it's not the same experience. I want to hear the hard drive spinning and I want to hear the heads moving. So something I was thinking was, what if I could drive the stepper motor externally using like an independent controller and then, you know, see if I can get some kind of signal from the PS2 itself and move the head randomly when there is drive access, drive activity. And I think I'm getting to a place where this is actually going to happen. So uh, the project is not finished, so we can uh, uh, do the finish it together today and uh, I'd like to show you where I am now and then we'll continue from there. Let me thank today's sponsor PCBWay but now let's focus on the hard drive let's see what I've done so far and let's see what I'd like to do to make it fully working with the PS2. Now first things first I'd like to make sure that my setup here can control the stepper motor and I happen to have a stepper motor here it's a bipolar stepper motor as you can see it comes with two coils inside and we talked about stepper motors before they're not like normal motors where you apply a voltage and the motor will just spin until you remove the voltage and it stops the stepper motor will require a driver and the driver will drive the stepper motor uh, appropriately so that steps are being performed by the motor. And by using an appropriate controller, which in this case is the Arduino, the driver of the stepper motor can precisely position the stepper motor to wherever you want. So you will move in steps, and you just need to tell the controller how many steps you want the motor to move and in which direction. So I can say move 50 steps clockwise and the controller will do that and the motor will step 50 steps clockwise and then I can say go back 50 steps counterclockwise. So it will go exactly to where it started. Now, as you can imagine, this is perfect for driving uh, something like a printer print head or a scanner carriage, or in this case, in my case, a hard drive head where you need to know exactly where the head is going. You can't just spin a motor for a random amount of time and hope it will land where you want it. You want to tell the motor exactly where to move the heads. As a stepper controller, I'm using this little board, it's manufactured by Pololu, and it's actually just a, how can I say, like a, a little board to house this little IC here, this SMD, very small uh, SMD IC, which I think is manufactured by Toshiba. Um, the board is not doing anything, it's just interfacing the IC with all the options it comes with. And it's very easy. Uh, here on the left hand side, you've got the coil connection. So you've got coil A plus and minus, coil B plus and minus, voltage in, which is the voltage for the motor. So in this case, it's 12 volts. 
and ground on the right hand side you got the controls for the stepper motor itself and uh, basically uh, all you have to do you have to supply some signals to this direction pin here which says clockwise or counterclockwise and to this uh, clock uh, which says step pin here so what happens is i tell the controller which direction i want to move the the shaft of the motor and then i send pulses to the controller, to the driver, and the driver will then drive the motor appropriately so it actually does that number of steps. So all he needs is basically these two pins, which are coming from an Arduino, which is perfect for that, as it comes with digital outputs, which is basically a square wave output, it's one and zero, so that's perfect for our uh, step pin and direction pins. Now, I'm using a library, which I think is called Axello Stepper, something like that, uh, which takes away the need of making your own code to actually make these pulses. Uh, the library, once it's configured, uh, allows you to set up the speed of the motor, and all you have to do is basically say, just move the motor to position X, and the motor will do that at the speed that you set within the parameters. Let me wire this motor in, supply 12 volts, and you know we'll just run a simple program and see, see if I can actually control this drive. Right, so I got the stepper motor connected. I'm not entirely sure about the wiring, but you know, we'll test in a second. And I've got this little code from the Arduino. As you can see in the setup, I'm only setting the acceleration, which is what matters to me. There's a maximum speed, and I'm not sure what the difference is between set speed and max speed, but we'll test in a moment. And the actual code is doing something very simple. It's going to position 1000 waits one second, 1000 milliseconds, and then it goes back to position zero, and it waits two seconds, and it starts again. So if it works, we should see the motor going back and forth at a reasonable speed, as I set up pretty high. Well, let's send the sketch to the Arduino. Okay, it's uploaded, and I've got 12 volts disconnected, that's why nothing is happening, and also I can move the motor. Let's turn on 12 volts and see what happens. Well, it's not working. So, a um, couple of things. It could be the current limiter on the control itself, on the driver itself, or I might have just um, miswired the the coils and it just, just it's not working for that reason. So I think there is data sheet of this motor online. Let me double check that. And yes, I've definitely miswired it. It's supposed to be red with blue and green with black. And right now I've got red with black and uh, blue with green so it can't work like that let me rewire it the way the data sheet says and hopefully that works okay let's try again with the correct wiring let's turn on 12 volts aha uh -huh. It is working, that's great, it's pretty cute. And obviously, again, as I said, it's a, it's a library. You know, if I wanted to move it uh, further than 1000, just need to add an extra zero, send the sketch and it should go further on. Perfect, this is working. So I know I can uh, drive a stepper motor using the did this contraption here, so I would say let's continue and try to adapt this setup onto the PS2 hard drive stepper motor for the heads. The very XT IDE I'm using in this PS2 was manufactured by PCBWay, a leading PCB manufacturer, which can help you with all your projects. As you can see, PCBWay have helped me with some of my projects, this ring tester, for example. We got the XT IDE, which I used in this project. I got the ZX Spectrum external ROM. Uh, this one is the uh, little adapter for modern floppy drives, which I used to diagnose this very uh, PS2, and these Apple II ROM replacement PCB, which I used for the Apple Apple to Europlus repair video. If you need a PCB manufactured for either your own project or something you find online, the process is super easy. The system is more or less automatic. All you need is the Gerber file, upload it on the website and choose a few options if you want. Select the postal service and the PCBs will be delivered at your place.
Don't forget the PCB way also offer other services like 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication, and also a PCB assembly service where not only do you order the PCB, but PCB way will also populate the PCBs with the components of your choice. I can definitely vouch for the quality of the PCBs I've received from PCBWay, and I'm sure that PCBWay can also help you with your projects. Well, PCBWay are definitely helping this channel by sponsoring it. Thank you very much. Your help makes these videos possible. So take a look at PCBWay.com. The link is also down below in the description. But now let's go back to the PS2. Now that I know that I can control a stepper motor using my little controller here, what I've done, I've wired the controller to the stepper motor of the IBM hard drive, which is the one driving the heads. Now, the plan is, again, to just move the head somehow. So, you know, before I even think of uh, interfacing the hard drive with something else, let's see whether I can actually uh, control this stepper motor, whether my wiring is correct in here, and then we'll, we'll move from there. One downside of this little motor here is that the label on the side of the drive doesn't really say much about the maximum current that the motor is supposed to draw. So I guess we'll, you know, we'll do a little bit of tests and hopefully we are not gonna burn it. But again, it doesn't have to be uh, super precise or anything. It's just making some noise. <laughs> so it should be fine, but we will have to set a current uh, limiter on the stepper motor controller itself. Otherwise, this motor uh, will basically just draw everything that my power supply is sending at it, which eventually is gonna be the power supply of the PS2. So <laughs> we definitely don't wanna upset that. Right, this is my first Arduino test here. I'm not an Arduino expert, so you know, feel free to leave comments saying, oh, why are you doing that? Just don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, but what I'm doing here, basically I'm just asking the stepper motor to move to position 600. Uh, wait a second, go back to position zero, wait two seconds, and then it will start again. So if that works, we should see the head uh, just moving back and forth. And you know, that will tell me that the controller here is working fine. So let's upload, well, compile and upload these uh, little sketch. Okay, it has uploaded. I got my power supply switched off, so I'll switch it on now. Well, it seems to be working, even though it's making a weird noise. Uh, you can see my power supply is drawing about 160 milliamps. Uh, let's open up this one. It's it's a, it's a broken drive, so obviously, you know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's working. It's working, but he's making this weird noise when it's idle. So I'm not sure what that is. Maybe I need to play with the um, limiter a little bit. So what I found is that whenever the limiter on this little controller board is uh, actually limiting, it causes the motor here to make this noise. And um, I go in touch with uh, the, well, let's call the manufacturer. I think it's a Toshiba IC, but in the end, this is manufactured by this company called Pololu. Uh, I checked online, I asked around on some forums, and it looks like uh, this is kind of unavoidable. Uh, it's not entirely clear, but the thing is, the reason why the stepper motor is uh, still energized when it's idle is to prevent the um, the motor from moving like I'm doing now. So if I'm now giving power to the motor again, you'll find that I can actually move the motor when it's idle. It doesn't move because it's locked in position by the uh, by, by the coils, basically, by the voltage running through the coil. That is not the voltage, but the current. I have to limit the current, otherwise the motor will catch fire. I think it's, it's pretty warm right now. Uh, but when I do that, it makes this weird noise, which I don't want to hear. Now, I'm sure there is a different product or something that can work with this, but in the end, this is just to make some noise, okay? We don't need precision, we don't need anything. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to control the enable pin of my driver here through the Arduino. So the Arduino will do enable, move, disable. At that point, I'm assuming that when I disable the controller, it will stop outputting voltage and current to the drive and that should go quiet. That should work. Let me wire this up and we'll test it together. 
Okay, I'm ready to test. All I've done, I wired the pin number four of the digital output to the enable pin of my controller. And what I've done in the, let's call it software, <laughs> it's not really software, uh, I have this enable pin, which is number four. Uh, the enable pin is set as an output pin. And then what happens, you have this digital write, which is enabling, uh, we're setting the pin to one, which is, what is it, 3.3 or five volts, whatever it is. Moves, it will move the head and then we'll um, turn off that pin, set digital write for the pin enable to zero and then uh, back to one just before moving and back to zero after it moves. So let's uh, load the software. Oh. Uh, well, okay, clearly it's digital write with capital W. We love these things. I'm a Windows person, so I'm not used to that. <laughs> clearly I'm not a developer. <laughs> and it's uploaded, so let me turn on my power supply and see what happens. It's working. Well, it's working. I think I've set the limiter so my power supply doesn't ever show anything more than 100 mill milliamps, which I think it's more or less okay for this uh, for this stepper motor. Uh, it's hard to say, um, but yes, I guess that could be okay. And I'm assuming, yes, I can move. I can move the stepper motor while it's idle because it's not energizing the coils. Now I've just checked on the PS2 power supply. The 12 volts line has a maximum output of 1.8 amps. So I think that uh, 100 milliamps is gonna be totally fine for the power supply. What matters is that it's fine for the stepper motor because I've run some tests at some point without the limiter. And then I suddenly realized that the motor was literally uncomfortable to touch because whenever it was idle, it was getting like whatever it was like three, four amps uh, from my power supply. So obviously that's a big no-no and we don't want that. Now, the next step would be to plug this into the IBM and uh, have the stepper motor being controlled by, I think, the activity LED of the XDID. Now, that won't give, like, perfection. Obviously, the uh, activity LED of the XDID is not the head movement, so I'll have to come up with some sort of random movement, and hopefully it will sound real enough, uh, especially for someone who doesn't know the computer and doesn't realize what's going on. But we'll give that a go. Um, another thing I might have to do, I might have to actually physically detach the heads from uh, from the arms here, because especially the top platter is very much uh, damaged. There are some scratches caused by my previous attempts here. And the platter was noisy, was making that kind of uh, metallic noise before. So I have a feeling that that's gonna be like quite some background noise. But for the time being, I would say let's reassemble as it is and let's make sure that this still works and everything, uh, see if we can control it, and then we'll move from there, we'll decide what to do, depending on how much noise that uh, first platter is making. Now, first things first, let's make sure the PS2 still works fine, it's been switched off for a couple of months, uh, I didn't replace all the tantalums on the board, so, you know, what's the, uh, the, the process here, what's the drill? In three, two, one, go. Okay. Yay. Still running well. Look at that. This computer is a tank. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> right, the hard drive is back in. The first thing I'd like to try is to make sure that it still works even with the stepper motor disconnected and also the heads uh, disconnected. I don't think there was much coming back from those heads. So let's power up and let's find out. In three, two, one, go. All right. Now, obviously we have a hard drive error because the hard drive is connected. So the controller is seeing the hard drive, but there's no response from the heads from anything. So there is an error message, which is not the end of the world, but ideally I'd like the computer not to even try to communicate with the hard drive. And I might have seen something on the schematics. I might be able to disable this kind of check, but we'll check in a minute. Let's uh, continue here with F1. Well, I guess another reason to see if I can completely disable the hard drive uh, is that I believe the computer now tried to boot from the hard drive there. Uh, it's kind of weird, but I need to have a look at that. But obviously I never tried the XDID with the hard drive itself. 
and I guess there might be a way to change that, but you know, let's ignore that for the time being. Now, the Arduino is still connected to the hard drive, but my power supply is switched off, which means the head is now idle in one position. If I give power to the power supply, the head will start moving, and I'm curious to see what kind of noise we hear when the head starts, you know, swiping back and forth and all that, uh, across that very damaged surface. Okay. It's working! It's not noisy. A little bit. Now, this is great, it works totally fine. This is J11, this is the hard drive connector onto the motherboard, and I've noticed that pin number two is connected to this line, which goes here on the right hand side, and it says um, HDU installed. So I'm wondering whether, you know, whenever pin two is brought high or low or something, uh, then the computer knows that there is a hard drive installed and it tries to communicate to it and if it doesn't get anything out of it then it says error and then my XDID doesn't work and that kind of stuff. I'm wondering if by covering pin number two with some captain tape uh, that makes the trick and you know I still get the power to the hard drive so everything spins because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the 12 volts I guess for the for the hard drive. Everything spins, everything works but the computer doesn't complain that there isn't a hard drive. I'm not sure. Let's give it a go. This finger here on the right hand side should be pin 2 and then you got 4 and 6 and everything because uh, I can see that this bunch of uh, fingers are all linked together and that's the ground. Then we have some 5 volts then we have some more ground, and then we have 12 volts here. Uh, on the other side, they are all independent, and obviously that's the address lines and data lines. Now, if you notice, pin number two, um, it's actually linked to pin number six, and four actually, and pin number four is ground, which means that when the connector is uh, connected from the motherboard, all that happens to pin number two is being grounded. So the idea is that hopefully, um, if I'm just covering the spin, pin number two is not going to be grounded and hopefully the motherboard will not detect that the hard drive has been plugged in, but the hard drive will still get 5 volts and 12 volts here. Well, let's see if that does the trick and the motherboard doesn't see the hard drive anymore. In 3, 2, 1, go. Yes, it's not checking the hard drive and it should boot from the XDID. Yes, it is, great. So we have the hard drive running because the platters are spinning, but the motherboard has not done anything to the hard drive. It's not looking for it and, and it's great. It's what I was looking for. So the next step would be now that we have the, you know, the computer is actually running, it's actually uh, booting into DOS, uh, the try and, um, monitor the XDID activity light and see whether we can do something with Arduino. Okay, let me show you my progress. I've got the Arduino connected to the external LED of the XDID here. The purple wire is a ground wire and the brown wire is going to pin four. Uh, I ended up moving the enable pin to pin five for no good reason, but it's now on pin five. And everything else is like that. So if we take a look at these, my little code here, and again, please bear in mind, I'm not an Arduino expert. Uh, let's ignore the setup for the moment. We have these uh, activity variable, which is reading the um, line coming from the XTAD LED. Now, I scoped that line, that LED line, and I found that it's a square wave. So it's either five volts or zero volts. There's nothing in between. So we can use it uh, for our purposes activity will become either zero or one. And when it becomes one, which means it's flashing, it's doing something, there is some light, then we get into that if statement. So if activity is one, then we generate uh, a random position for the head where to go. I have something in between zero and 355. I did a little bit of testing and it looks like that's the mechanical range for the heads to move without uh, hitting the uh, the center hub or you know hitting the other end so you, you can hear this mechanical you can hear the the most struggling at that point so that should be in a safe area let's call it that way 
then we uh, enable uh, we set the enable pin to 5 volts which is uh, to enable the actual uh, driver controller here the stepper motor controller and we actually move the head to that random position we've uh, generated a moment ago. Then we generate a random number, which I called Bob for whatever reason, which is in between 10 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds. Again, it's a little bit of experimenting and that seems to be working fine. We apply that delay, so we wait that time and we go back to monitoring the activity LED. So if the activity LED is then uh, uh, switched off then we check it again and again and again until it's switched on again at that point we move the head to a random position again now bear in mind that the activity led of the xt ide does not represent the head movement of any hard drive i think that's actually the data being read so i have no way to you know, make this real. I can't move the heads where actually it would go. Uh, number one, because the xt is a different hard drive. It's a, what is that, like a 512 megabyte. This is a 20 megabyte. So I would need some translation. But most importantly, because I wouldn't know where to get that information. It's beyond my capabilities. And even if it wasn't, I feel it would really not be worth the time invested into this project for something that is just supposed to be making a little bit of noise. Now, before I show you, let's have a look at this setup section real quick. I added basically an initialization routine. So the uh, the heads will, uh, well, the Arduino will wait 15.5 seconds, which is more or less for the uh, PS2 to get to the, where the memory count has finished. So it looks like the computer is talking to the, uh, to the hard drive and the hard drive will uh, move the heads from left to right or the whole range. Reason is I really haven't got a way to know where the head stopped the previous time when the computer was switched off. So that will, uh, it will probably hit the, the center hub. So will make a little bit of mechanical noise, but then it will definitely go back to position zero. So it shouldn't happen again during normal use. It's my uh, poor man's way to uh, recalibrate the position of the heads. Let's call it that way. But enough me talking, let's power this up and I'll show you how it works. So what do you think? I think it's pretty good. Obviously, it's not perfectly faithful, as I said, but honestly, I wouldn't know how to do better than this. I'm super happy with the outcome and uh, and the head is not even noisy on that very scratched platter. I'm, I'm actually surprised. So I would say the next step would be uh, to try and make this a little bit more permanent. So we have to get the five volts. I guess I'll do that from the hard drive, the 12 volts from the hard drive itself and uh, you know wire everything inside close everything and then it's gonna be you know done with the fake hard drive fake sound <laughs>
All right, I think it's done. We got the Arduino here, we got the stepper controller here, and a little bit of wires everywhere, including a little wire coming from the XDID, which is on the other end of the computer. Now, let's see if it works. I mean, obviously this is now being powered entirely by the computer. There's no uh, five volts coming from the USB. And most importantly, the 12 volts from the hard drive is uh, going into the stepper motor controller. So let's see if it works. In three, two, one, go. It is working, this is so cool. The only thing is I need to increase the delay before the, it's called the hard drive does the self-test, because I've noticed the, the head started moving when it was still counting memory, but I'll have to um, <laughs> plug my USB into the Arduino now, change the value, and then we can try again. I've changed the delay to 17 seconds, let's see how it works now. This is so cool. It works perfectly fine. So I guess this is it, you know, we've, we've done it. Uh, there's nothing else to be done. I know it's a little bit of a spaghetti junction. Um, I think it's fine for now, but uh, it works. So let's um, put the lid back on and uh, and that's it. And it's uh, it's done. When comparing the sound from Epitronics video, it seems that the real hard drive moves the heads faster than my contraption here. I did try with different speeds, but I wasn't able to match the same pitch. I think I might be able to step the motor faster by using my own code. That is, by making loops, sending pulses, rather than using the Acelo stepper library. However, in the end I decided it was not worth the extra time invested. Do you feel to recommend though? Oh, and by the way, when Epictronics kindly got his PS2 out for this video, and thanks again to Epictronics, if you don't know his channel, I do recommend you pay him a visit, it turned out that his hard drive might be failing too, as Check it run the test, but the test itself failed. I hope it's not the case, of course, but that would be compatible with my findings about those drives, unfortunately. I wasn't expecting such an amazing result. This sounds so realistic. If I hadn't told you that this is a fake sound generated by an Arduino, by an Arduino driving the stepper motor, you wouldn't have guessed that. I am absolutely super happy with the outcome. I think this is the best I can get, besides buying a new hard drive, which is not gonna last very long, or buying a better hard drive, which is not gonna sound like this. I don't know why I'm so attached to this squeaky sound, but I I really love it and I think this is the perfect solution for this kind of machine where the hard drives are getting so unreliable. 
I thoroughly enjoyed the process. As I said, I'm not an Arduino expert, so, you know, just grabbed the code online and just guessed it and, and tested it. And it's working. It's a simple code, of course. Uh, I will post the code somewhere if you really wanted to uh, do something like this. Feel free to change it, because as I said, I'm no expert when it comes to coding and developing. So feel free to correct me. Feel free to suggest a better way of doing this. Maybe all of this can be done by a couple of lines using a different approach. I'm I always enjoy learning new things about coding because, again, I'm not an expert. Well, I guess that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, as usual, I'd appreciate a thumb up down below and consider subscribing to this channel if you like this kind of things. For now, I wish you a great day. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon here on this channel for my next videos. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye-bye.